Hi, everybody. My name is Ken, and today I'm going to be explaining DNA and mitotic cell division. So here's the mind map. It shows the topics that we are covering in this series. And in this video, we're going to be covering DNA structure, cell division, DNA replication, and protein synthesis. We've already covered biological molecules, enzymes, transport in cells, and cell membrane. If you haven't checked that out, please feel free to do so. DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. Nucleic acid are a group of biological molecules, and the monomers, or the basic units of this group, are called nucleotides. They are made up of a deoxyribose sugar in the middle that is attached to a phosphate group, at the five carbon. So this is a fifth carbon and it's attached to the phosphate. As you can see here, it is a five carbon here and it's attached there. And it's attached to a base. We call this a nitrogenous base. You can see the nitrogen atoms in the structure and it's linked to the ribose sugar at the first carbon. So DNA is made up of two DNA strands in a double helix shape. And those DNA strands are made from a nucleotide, such as this one, linked together by phosphodiester bonds. And those bonds, the linking of nucleotides, are synthesized by DNA polymerase. The last part of polymerase, ASE, is highlighted because anything that ends with ASE, generally speaking, in biology, it means it's an enzyme. So it catalyzes the formation of phosphodiester bonds. So DNA can be found in our nucleus of our cell. So this is our cell, this is the nucleus, and it can be found as this red-like substance known as chromatin when the cell is not dividing, meaning the cell is carrying out its normal functions, it's carrying out its normal processes, and it's preparing to divide. If you search a human cell, photomicrographs, you'll be able to see jelly border with this like a clear-ish inside and inside that clear-ish substance you'll see like this little dot that is a bit darker that is chromatic. By double helix shape I mean it's like this. The shape of a twisted ladder. Okay so base pairing rules. So DNA is made up of nucleotides and the nucleotides there are four different bases these nucleotides, the nucleotide can have. Those are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. For short, we're going to call them A, T, C, G. So, so the rule is that adenine binds with thymine and cytosine binds with guanine. So when synthesizing a DNA strand, first, the complementary base pairs. So for example, for here, we have guanine on this side. Let's say we're synthesizing the this right strand. And after all the bases have paired up, and then DNA polymerases synthesizes the new strand in the 5 to 3 direction. So 5 to 3 means, let's go back a bit. So from the 5 carbon point to the 3 carbon point. So you can see then at the 5 end, there will be a phosphate group. And at the 3 end, there will be no phosphate group. So from this side where there's a phosphate group to this side where there's no phosphate group ending here. But why? Why Why must the base to the up first? Why, why is there even a rule for this? So that's because DNA is noted to be the control center. The DNA gives instructions to the cell what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and like, you know. And the commands given out by the DNA is written in the base sequence. So think of DNA as a barcode. You may have encountered barcodes before. In a barcode, you have this sort of label on a product. And in the label, you have like unique lines. But each line is a unique thickness. Like let's say this is a barcode. That each line is a unique thickness. And the barcode reader is able to sort of scan and tell the difference, tell the unique thickness. In the case of DNA, the unique line thickness would be a combination of three bases and the barcode reader would be ribosomes. Now, now let's turn our attention to this section of DNA, commonly known as a gene. So you can see on this strand, you have this sequence. On that, on this, on the other strand, you have the bases are complementary to the other strand. Like 
let's see T A, right? So C binds with G, T binds with A, and A binds with T. And the unique line thickness, which I was talking about earlier, would mean three bases. C, T, and A, G, A, and T. These three. It is not, it is not two or one, it has to be three. And we'll see in a bit why. So protein synthesis. So synthesis means the build up. So protein synthesis means the build up or making of protein. So the first process that happens in protein synthesis is transcription. So let's see what happens. So the DNA unzips. We have our usual helical shape, but at a certain section, the ladder is untwisted. So it becomes like this parallel lines for a bit. Uh, and what happens is that free RNA nucleotides line up again according to base pairing rules. It's the same as last time, but now adenine binds to thymine and uracil binds to adenine. So you have A, G, T, C, C, C in the DNA sequence. Then you have U, C, A, G, C, C. And the phosphodiester bonds, again, are synthesized by an enzyme called RNA polymerase. And after that synthesis is complete, the RNA exits the nucleus. The RNA exists because the DNA is too big to leave the nucleus and go to ribosomes itself. As I said earlier, the barcode scanner would be the ribosome and the number or letter base triplet corresponding would be amino acids. But, base, but the base triplet, in this case ADT, would become UCA on the mRNA. So we call that a codon. Okay, so that's transcription. Translation. So at translation, the mRNA, it exits the nucleus and arrives at ribosome. The mRNA slots into place and the tRNA, which act as like these shuttle buses, they're free amino acids in the cytoplasm and tRNAs go grab one and then bring them to the ribosome. And then the tRNA, they pair up. Uh -huh. And then we say the anticodons line up with their complementary codon on the mRNA. When they, when they have lined up, the amino acid is released. And that amino acid forms a peptide bond with its neighboring amino acids. And then as that process continues, we have this chain of amino acids. We have a polypeptide, which is a protein. And whenever a amino acid is released and added, the ribosome sort of clicks towards the mRNA. Think of it as like a printer. So that section of paper is pushed forward and it continues working on the rest of the paper. And this is what is known as the central dogma of genetics. Proteins play important roles in a cell in many different forms. For example, receptor proteins, enzymes, channel proteins, carrier proteins, for example, for enzymes, without enzymes, reactions inside the cell would be too slow. So there needs to be a certain number of functioning proteins doing their job present inside the cells. And the DNA base sequence, which dictates which proteins are made, is essential. If the base sequence is altered so that too little or too much of a certain protein is made, it affects the cell survival. And as we saw earlier, sections of DNA which code for a certain protein are called genes. So proto-oncogene, they code for proteins involved in cell division. And if these proteins are constantly made, cell division continuously takes place. We say the cell is proliferating. And if the proto-oncogene cannot be stopped, like it will just keep making more and more proteins, we can we say that it has turned into a Oncogene. Another gene responsible for cancer cells are tumor suppressor genes. So they code for proteins that regulate the rate of cell division. And if these proteins are not present or insufficient, the rate cannot be controlled. So the way by which tumor suppressor genes work is that they code for a protein. It can sort of act as this sort of law to the proteins coded by the proto-oncogene. So only when that block, that protein is released, the protein from the proto-oncogene can work, do its job, and help the cell in cell division. DNA repair genes code for proteins that fix mistakes in the base sequence that occur during DNA replication, or as a consequence of other factors such as carcinogens. So DNA replication process where 
a lot of things can go wrong and it can go pretty badly. So gain replication occurs during interphase where the cell is growing and preparing to undergo cell division. So DNA molecule unzips and complementary base pairs line up. The DNA polymerase synthesizes the new strands and it happens for both strands in the five to three direction. So for here, so in this thing, it's supposed, it's going to go this way. And for this polymerase, it's going to go this way. So how, how come that we have two identical copies? So let's turn our attention to this gene. So in yellow is the original strand, the strand that is going to get copied. It unzips on this part, it unzips like that. And then new strands are synthesized in both sides and then you can see that the resulting is the exact same as the original so this new strand corresponds to this strand and this new strand corresponds to this strand so it's the same thing so dna replication is just one phase during the cell cycle it occurs during s phase and s phase g1 g2 they're all part of interface when the cell is growing and preparing to divide and then we have M, which is mitosis. So a few things to know before we dive into mitosis. Think of DNA as a thread, and the thread is wrapped around a long pole. And then that pole folds into a more compact spool, as you can see here, and that is chromosome. So when the cell is ready to divide, chromatin and nucleus condenses to form chromosome. And you have this. So the chromosomes are only visible during mitosis. So the chromosomes after DNA replication, they're made up of two sister chromatids. So you can see this perfectly symmetrical X shape. So on this side, on the left side, we have one sister chromatid. On the right side, we have another sister chromatid. And the colored sections represent genes. And you can see they have the exact same genes at the exact same location. And chromosomes have this special part called telomeres. They are the end sections of a chromosome. And what they do is that they have repeated bases. When DNA replication occurs, the DNA gets shorter. It's sort of just how it works. It's not perfect. And to prevent that, to prevent the important gene from being left out, we have telomeres. Telomeres increase the length of DNA, and they do so by having repeated base sequences. So centromere is a part of a chromosome that holds sister chromatids together. There are no genes present in this region. And we have an enzyme involved again, telomerase, which is responsible for maintaining the length of telomeres. So that when after DNA replication, so the lost repeated bases are sort of added on again. Telomerase in normal cells, so they have sort of like a restriction on them. And when that telomerase runs out, it just cannot keep up with how fast the telomeres are shortening and it gets to the important genes that the cell dies. But in cancer cells, they have an increased number of telomerase or increased production of telomerase so that their telomeres are not damaged during rapid cell division. It's one of the adaptations by which cancer cells manage to survive. So there are four parts to mitosis. First is prophase. Second is metaphase. Third is anaphase. Fourth is telophase. So this yellow background here represents the cytoplasm, and the purple background here represents the nucleus. So in prophase, the chromosomes appear in little x's. The nuclear envelope disappears. So this little dotted line here, it's like the membrane of nucleus. Centrosomes are these little organelles. They have been replicated before mitosis, and they start moving in opposite directions. So Next is metaphase. What happens is that the chromosomes organize themselves so, so that they're in a neat single file line along the equator. So the equator means the mid distance between the two centrosomes and spindle fibers, which are which sort of protrude from the centrosomes, they attach themselves to the centromeres of chromosomes. Next is anaphase. The sister chromatids are pulled apart at, at the centromere. The centromere has been replicated so that you can see one centromere for each sister chromatid. And then they're pulled to opposite sides by the spindle fibers. The spindle fibers shorten so that 
it makes this flowing motion. You, and in telophase, the nuclear envelope reforms, and the sister chromatids are in separate nuclei. The spindle fibers are used in pinching off the cell. So sort of like how you use a thread to cut an egg, if you do so. The chromosomes turn back into chromatin, and the nuclear envelope reforms again. And then comes cytokinesis, when this splitting is complete and every other organelle has been replicated as well, and it splits into two new, perfectly identical daughter cells. But, but why does mitosis happen? So organisms grow, their cells grow, they become too big, and when cells become too big, it becomes inefficient, simply because of processes such as diffusion, after transport, osmosis. So diffusion is the movement of substances from a region of high to low concentration. And the movement is very slow. Therefore, it's only efficient when the distance is very small. Like we are breathing, I'm talking, my brain is coordinating my thoughts and my speech, and cells are moving, they're working, diffusion is occurring. Diffusion is occurring, facilitated diffusion, active transport. It happens so fast. It happens faster than our minds can sort of grasp. So processes such as diffusion must be very fast as well. But if you observe diffusion on a macro scale, food coloring and a glass of water, you can see that it's very slow. It's it's slow that it's almost like watching paint dry. But on the molecular scale, the cell membrane is just like a few molecules, a few, few nanometers, and the molecule itself is also a few nanometers. It's fast enough. There are enough of those small, fast enough reactions the cell can keep up. It can live, we can breathe, we can coordinate. So it's bad for a cell to get too big. And that's why it performs cell division. Like this is a big cell. It occupies a whole square. But then the new daughter cells, they're only about half, less than half of the entire square. There are times where we get hurt where our cells, they're damaged and they need to be replaced. And mitosis is used because it produces the same cell again, it's completely the same thing, but just younger in a sense. And yeah, that's it. And see you in the next part, cell signaling and cell respiration.